first do. example you're talking about is in the pre-revolutionary period. He's the first person to realize that this imperial, the tightening of the empire that begins in 1765 or so is going to lead to a secession of, from the British Empire. And that he, we've created two different cultures in, in America, and especially New England and, and England, and uh, we, we can't stay together. And then he reads the, this as a conspiracy on the part of the Brits uh, to impose these new constraints and to move from us from being fellow members in the British Empire to colonists whose rights don't really exist. And um, he's very well read, one of the reasons he's very well read in English law and constitutional history. He's well read in European history. Um, he's thought a lot about these constitutional issues. And as I indicated earlier, he's looking for it. He's looking for a, a cause that will eventually, will eventually call the, the independence um, to latch himself to and become the leader of. Um, which so he's self-conscious about posing for these roles, like and he, you know, so he wants to be appointed to the Continental Congress, and even though that's risky at that time, but he's betting the farm, okay? He's betting the farm, his whole career, his life and fortune and sacred honor, as Jefferson put it, that this is going to be a, a revolution that's going to succeed, even though we're going to be fighting the greatest uh, military force, combined army and navy in the world, they don't have a chance. <laughs> and we didn't fully, I think, understand why he was right about that until Vietnam. That Vietnam made us aware the British never had a chance. Um, and it's, so it's a reverse. And he understood that. Okay? And he was the equivalent of Secretary of Defense during the, whole, during the war up to 1778 in the Continental Congress as head of the Board of did, War did and Ordnance. Did he understand about the so-called Fabian strategy? Yes. He read about that. He said, no person has read more military history in the last three years in the world than I have. Um, and he, he associated it sometimes with Fabius, but also with the Thebians in the Peloponnesian War. The Thebians essentially decided not to fight and to back off and never have a serious engagement with the Spartans or the Athenians, I guess it was. And, and that's, so it, to, after Washington nearly lost the army in, uh, in Manhattan, he said, the Thebian strategy is right for you now, meaning don't fight yeah. uh, or, you know, c you know, don't get, you don't ever put the army in a situation where it can be annihilated. Right, right. He's, uh, so, if, you know, like people sometimes, you know, th they say Joseph Ellis is a presidential historian. I'm not a presidential historian. I write about people who happen to be president. But in his case, Adams's case, and this would be true of Washington and Jefferson as well, the, the presidency was not the capstone of their, of their career. Adams thought the greatest thing he ever did, he did in the Continental Congress in the 1770s. That was his big, big moment, big contribution. Um, Washington would have said winning the war. The presidency is an is a epilogue. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law, the leader of reform in legal education and a leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.